I mean, like all right now, I don't want to ruin it by using my like harsh voice. I feel like we need, oh my God. Hey v -butts, I'm back and today I have an absolutely crazy video for you because after two months of daily searching both in store and online, calling every store I could think of multiple times per day, making a few friends and probably more people who never want to speak to me again, searching all of the online buy and sell sites and two days, four hours, including inline time of waiting. I finally have a Magic Mixies cauldron. Yes, you heard me right. 2021's top toy wish list item of the year is in my hands and oh boy was it a hassle to get one. But at the end of the day, mission was obviously accomplished and I think we should get straight to the opening to find out if it was worth all of that struggle and the money in my wallet and potentially yours because it was not cheap. So here is my Magic Mixie. Currently, there is quite a bit of glare coming off this plastic part up here where it's giving us an idea of the mist and creature we will eventually create using our Mix and Magic potions, which is really cute. So let's quickly just get this stuff out of the way so that we can unbox and no longer have to deal with that glare. It's beautiful, gold on top, purple on the bottom with a big blue jewel in the center. And it comes with a matching magic wand. But if you don't want a blue one, there is a pink alternative and it will be the exact same gold and purple cauldron except with a pink gem and matching wand and of course, pink creature inside. And as I discovered last night, there's now a third option or I guess technically there always was but only if you live in the States and that would be a Walmart or Amazon exclusive which is a teal or light blue and pink cauldron and a nice rainbow gem in the center. And needless to say, the moment I saw it, I wanted it but of course, course, I'm not going to be picky because I'm lucky enough to have this one here today. And once we do all the magic fancy things that we're supposed to be able to do, we will in fact have created, through magic of course, our very own creature. And it will have over 50 different sounds and reactions. So I'm going to quickly show this off to you on all four sides just so you can see everything the package has to offer. And then figure out quickly how I'm meant to open this because it looks very specific. And while I figure this out, I'll just let you know that I was not over exaggerating in the slightest when I was saying how hard it was and how long it took for me to get one of these myself and unfortunately how expensive it's gonna be because in the states these initially started off at $69.99 at places like Kohl's, Target, Amazon, Walmart and other retailers but now if you're lucky enough to find them they can start as low as a hundred dollars and will most definitely cost you more if you buy it from a third-party seller and and if you're in Canada, the base cost was $69 at its lowest point from Walmart up to $100 at other stores like Toys R Us and Indigo. That was a couple of weeks ago if you were lucky enough to get them. Now it is way, way more. I picked this up today for $145 after tax. But I'm not going to complain because it is way better than buying from third party sellers who are charging a minimum of $150 up to $300, which is so against the spirit of the holidays because you know full well they didn't pay that price themselves to get it otherwise they wouldn't be selling it if they wanted it that bad. These are scalpers plain and simple and they're just taking advantage of parents who are trying to make their children's wishes come true. So please whatever you do no matter how badly your child might want this or somebody you know and care about just do not buy from scalpers. One day they will all stop. That is the dream. And with that I'd like to say I have officially opened my cauldron and we can get started. Wow! Look at that guys! Magic made it open! Ah! Okay, so for real though, this is what was on top. Our fake little puff of mist with some creature eyes and a clear plastic lid. And now we can see what's inside. By the way, this is our wand. It's very nice and light. I like it. It's just a little top heavy because of the gem, but otherwise it's really nice and it feels kind of like a super fancy paintbrush. I'm digging it. But yeah, back to in here. So we've got ourselves a light purple with 
with embedded silver glitter potion vial here. I was gonna say bottle, but there's no lid or stopper, so I'm going with vial. There's a little tag on the side saying that it's number one, and there's a nice little jewel in the front. It's almost like a minty green aqua color. By the way, my studio lights make things look different than they may appear on camera, so just take my word for it. Then we've got a red piece of paper with big yellow words. It says stop. Important information for parents and supervisors. Please turn this over. When the mist is released to reveal the Magic Mixie plush, it will have a significant fog-like effect and may have a mild odor. Please be assured it has been extensively tested and has been assessed by multiple independent certified child safety specialists, ensuring there are no potential health and safety risks. To generate the mist effect, we have used vegetable glycerin, which is safe for human consumption. It does not contain any animal byproducts or chemical additives. If you have concerns regarding this feature or if your child suffers from respiratory issues, please scan the QR code below for further information before activating the toy. If you want to disable the mist effect for any reason, please refer to the two ways of play page in the instruction manual. And here's a tip. For best performance, charge the cauldron before use. Refer to the charging the cauldron page of the instruction manual. And the charge time is an approximate 60 to 90 minutes. So that's very useful information. And it also seems like it's gonna be mandatory for us to charge up our cauldron before we can test it. But uh, first we have to get there. So let's continue removing things. Like this bag here. Open it up. Inside we have a bluish aqua colored key, maybe? Not exactly certain, but it's very pretty with embedded silver glitter. Our charge cord, I'm not sure on length, but it is a USB-A to a USB micro, I believe. I'm not 100% familiar with my cords, so I'll have to check the instructions. And luckily for us, there are two here. One is in French because it's Canada and that's our second language, and one in English. Ooh, okay, so inside we have more cardboard and an aqua gem container filled with stuff and more embedded silver glitter. Ooh, we've got a little spell book here and inside it tells us exactly what we need to do in order to create our creature. And after each step, we need to pay attention and listen for the tap, tap, tap sound, look for the green glowing light, and then tap our cauldron three times. I guess we have to do those steps in order for anything to work. So I'll tuck that away until I'm ready for it. And then we'll lift this up. Oop, never mind. we'll drop this. <laughs> and underneath we have the different elements to our potion making stuff. Okay, so there's no number one, but number two is a little vial with powder in it. Three's got gold stars. Four has a purple, teal, and blue feather. Five has blue flowers. Six has pieces of crystal. And seven has a scroll in it with a pink ribbon. Oh, hold on. This was number one. Remember we got the see-through purple potion bottle. Nice, 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 nice. Oh, and the final thing inside other than cardboard is a bonus mist refill vial and nothing on the inside. It says create more mist with this mist refill vial. Go to page 15 in the instruction manual for more information. Or you can scan this QR code down here for an easy video on how to refill your cauldron. And the vial itself is really cute. It's pretty much a replica of the large potion vial we have, except no blue gem. And this one has a pink gem stopper on top, once again with embedded silver glitter. And inside, there's a clear liquid swishing around. And if you have to use the mist refill kit because it runs out, just make Make sure you follow the instructions in the manual. All right, so now comes the time when we learn how to use this. But first, I'm just going to point out on the bottom of the cauldron, we've got little rubber feet, which is perfect because this is going to have liquids of some sort in it and you don't want it sloshing all over the place. And those little pads will help to prevent that from happening. All right, so it says before we can get started, we need to charge our cauldron up before playing for the very first time. And there is a section called charging your cauldron, which will let you know exactly how to do that. Or you can just follow my instructions, which would be to take your cauldron and find the little flap on the right side. And if you pull it down gently, you'll see the spot where you plug in the cord they gave you and you'll be using the micro side. Then you take the opposite end, which is USB-A and plug it into a charging adapter, which unfortunately is not included, but they mention in the instructions that it should work with all standard USB charging adapters, as long as it's a 2.0 charger that plugs into a wall socket, which is what I'm about to do now. So 
I will see you guys in an hour or so. Magic. <sighs> All right, so my cauldron is fully charged now, or at least I assume it is, because when I first plugged it in, there was a little red light and it stopped glowing. So I feel like that means we can start. But before I do, I just want to point out that underneath this little flap where the charge port is, we also have a little switch here. On the left, we have create mode, which has mist. And on the right, we have spell mode, which has no mist. And that's the one you would want to choose if you were concerned about how the feature would affect your children, especially if they had any respiratory illnesses. But of course, we want to see it with mist. So I'll just put that back, close up the side, and we can begin. I'm going to get this little spell book here, which is really good for kids to follow along with. We've got some nice visual instructions. And while they're using those, us boring old parents can stick to the black and white super reflective instructions that come with a lot more information and troubleshooting ideas in case you find any issues. The most important thing to remember is just to make sure we're following the prompts that the cauldron gives us. And I'm only mentioning that because I'm not sure how well it's going to show on camera under my studio lights, but it will glow green and make a tap 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 sound. And that's how we'll know that it's time to move on, but not before we tap 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 ourselves because nothing's going to happen until we do. Also, we'll know if we get it right because there'll be a celebration sound and a bit of a light show. And now we begin. I've got my wand, I've got my cauldron, and I think to get things started, since I'm not finding any other switches, we just need to start adding ingredients. So first up, we have our water potion. I hear it bubbling up. Oh, and there's the tap. So here we go. Ooh. Next comes the sound dust. Now, our Glimmer Star. Ooh. Now, our Feather. It's so pretty. just floating there. I've got to stir it until it dissolves, apparently. Oh, time to proceed. Now the fizz flower. Looks like a Pac-Man ghost. And I have to break it up with the wand. Time for the crystal gem. Oh, that looks cool. Feels like wax or soap. break up very easily, but I guess that's good enough. And now the final ingredient, the naming scroll. Oh, did I tap it yet? So I'm going to go with Jibber. Come on, little Jibber. Happening. 
happening. All right, here we go. Last time. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Don't worry guys, I've got the other camera. Oh my gosh. This is so cool. I'm a wizard. <laughs> right now I don't want to ruin it by using my like harsh voice I feel like we need oh my god <laughs> I was gonna say I feel like we need something special and sweet sounding okay just in case you're worried it does not have a smell in here it did faintly smell like flowers but now it doesn't smell like anything and this doesn't have a taste not that it really should but just in case you were wondering the smoke is now dissipating <gasps> let's go in for the close-up actually it kind of does it smells like a campfire <gasps> Chipper. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, I gotta be careful not to tip this because there's a potion in the bottom. But look, the smoke is all going away now. Or the mist has dissipated. And look, I'm a wizard. I created a creature. And that creature is Jibber. All right, that was insanely cool. And I'm about to take my creature out in just a sec, but first I wanna say, kids will love that. After a little while, I did notice that there was a slight smoky campfire smell, but nothing dangerous happened whatsoever. As long as your hands do not go into the cauldron when that magic reveal is happening, you should be fine. And apparently we can actually do about five of the create mode with the mist before you're gonna need to use that refill vial they gave us, so that's good. The only difference is you won't have these specific ingredients, but really as long as you're following along and tapping, it has no clue. Because while I was doing it, it told me to move on thinking I had already progressed and I didn't. Although that was my fault for taking so long and filming extra footage. Okay, enough talking from me. So now we're gonna take out... What? What just happened? Okay, so now we're gonna take out our creature by twisting counterclockwise. Oh. Come on. How do you get it out? I'm following the instructions. <laughs> All right, it's already making noises in there and I'm having a hard time getting it out. It says to twist counterclockwise, but that doesn't seem to be happening. What's it attached to? Ah, there's a little elastic band in there holding it on. They don't mention that. Hold on. It's attached to the arm. Okay. Ooh. It does smell very fireworky in here now. I don't mind the smell of it. I actually like it, but just so you know. Oh my goodness, it's tooting. Hey, the number six crystal gem that we added is on my little jibber's head. Oh my goodness, he is so cute. Okay, so I'm gonna take off this little instructional piece and here is my magic mixy jibber. How adorable is he? I just like the fact that something is named jibber. Maybe I need another rescue pet so I can name it that. But in the meantime, this creature is absolutely adorable. I haven't found anything wrong so far other than the fact that it's probably gonna be a little bit hard. <laughs> He's not getting enough attention. Other than the fact that it might be difficult to buy refill kits, but as long as you don't mind the fact that they're not gonna be these specific things, you can continue on and have fun with the cauldron because the instructions say that it has at least five uses before you... Because the instruction, seriously? 
because the instructions say that it has at least five uses before you have to use a refill vial. And that's good news because you can pretty much just use water and little fake toys or something because essentially it's just a little bowl in there that flips over. So it's not a big deal. But you know what is my new creature who's teal and pink and purple and super cute. Very soft and plushy other than the weird little bit of a filmy feel from the mist that settled on him. He does have a little bit of loose fuzz which is coming off but he is new so I expect that. So his lower body is a nice soft fuzzy fur except he has plastic paws for his hands and feet. A hard plastic face with glittery pink eyes which is not coming off, pearly purple horns, and a light up gem in the center of his forehead, which glows whenever he makes sounds. On top of his head, he has little blue ears with pink insides, a lot of fuzzy hair, and even more fuzz for his tail, which is like a pastel rainbow. And finally, some felt wings on the back. They're like a very pale purple pink color. And the very best part is there's an on and off switch. So you don't have to go crazy, not right away at least. And if you ever need to replace the batteries, the compartment is just inside the head hidden under all the fur. And once you cut off this little tag back here, he is perfect to uh, try to prop up unless we can make him stand on his own. Hold on. Nope, maybe not. There is a wire in his tail. So can we do it that way? Yes, as long as you don't mind a little lean. I just love that I can make him stand up. That is a very helpful wired piece of body fluff in the back there, guys. By the way, the arms and legs also have wire in them as well, which is great because now your Mixie can participate in the spell and potion making process with you because as we've figured out, you can definitely do this over and over. So I'm gonna take him down for just a sec because first I just wanna show you that in order to repeat any spell, whether with or without mist, you will need to remove the bottom and clean out the potion you just created, which I've already done. Otherwise, I wouldn't be tipping this over. So you dump it in the sink, make sure that anything that's not broken down has been discarded, and then give it a rinse and dry it with paper towel. As for this section here, just dry it out with paper towel. Make sure this does not get wet. Otherwise, you may not have a working cauldron. And honestly, that would be a real shame because it's a very large part of this overall toy. Whether or not you can still use the cute creature after. So let's put that back together, making sure the triangles line up on the side. And if you do choose to do it again, make sure you've got your reset key handy so that you can stick it in the side and reset the cauldron. There is currently an elastic band inside, which you can take out. But if you want to stick your mixy creature back in, I would leave it because otherwise it won't be secure when it's flipping. So I'm just going to leave it for now. But yeah, you just take your key and click it over. But bam, we are ready to start again. And the good news is you can just use water. There's no rule that says you have to use refill kits, but you will start to run out of mist after a few uses, which is when the bonus refill vial of mist potion comes in handy. And if you want to make it last a little longer, don't forget you can turn it to spell mode only, which doesn't require any mist. Oh darn it, I forgot before I flipped it over to show you this, but that nice little treasure box that we got that was shaped like a gem has a hole in the bottom that fits perfectly perfectly and locks on the same side that can also hold the mixy creature. And that's so that you can do this spell over and over and have different surprises pop out if you want to. So just keep that in mind. So I'm all done with that. And the last thing that I want to show you, hopefully without giving too much of the surprises away, is of course, like I said, there is wires so that our creature can bend. I had forgotten to show that, but he's awfully quiet for somebody who was interrupting me a lot just two minutes ago. So how do we interact? Hello? High five. Are you asleep? Last thing I want to show you is that our creature is in fact interactive. Obviously we heard that earlier, but I want you to know that there's an interrupting gibber in the room. <laughs> no, there is so much more that you can do with them by touching the sensor above its forehead. And it's almost like you're just feeding it love or something weird like that. I'm sure they say something profound in the instructions. Hold on, let's see. Ah, uh, yes, they call it nurturing and it helps to build up energy, which you can see in its gem. As the lights change colors, you'll know how energetic your mixy creature is. So unfortunately, it doesn't mention it in the smaller instructions for the kids, but the bigger manual does let you know what each color of the gem means. So red means the energy level is weak and unfortunately no colors are coming up right now, but red means weak, blue is medium, and gold is strong. <laughs> oh, look at that. He's doing just fine. Next, if we use our magic wand, apparently our Mixie can... <laughs> 
yawn. <laughs> Apparently the Mixie has magical responses. If we quickly tap, we will put it in a Mixie spell mode. So using our wand, we'll tap the tip of the gem. Oh, he finds my, um... <laughs> apparently this information is boring for him, but we're gonna tap this gem on his forehead. So one quick one puts him into spell mode. Or not. Uh. One quick tap puts him into mixy spell mode. What? <laughs> That's what it said. See? One quick tap puts him in mixy spell mode. It was supposed to turn purple. That's what it says. Wait, maybe he fell asleep. He was snoring. Hold on. Wake up. How do you wake it? I guess it turns itself off. Hold on. We'll try this again. I think it fell asleep. Ooh. You gotta give it its, its fair shake. All right, so one quick tap should give us a purple light. Never mind, he's just waking up. Try again. Oh, I feel bad. Um, it told me to do it. Here, let me nurture you. By the way, the more you rub the forehead, the more the energy level goes up, which is good. Your creature's gonna love you. But I don't want it to love me right now. I want spell mode. Go purple. Do we do it a certain direction? Ooh, that went white. That's, oh, there, it's purple. We're in spell mode. Oh, so you definitely have to use the tip. So I guess the light means it's doing it. So now we'll just keep tapping on the gem and the Mixie will cast spells. Nice. And the more we do this, the spells will increase and the gem will eventually strobe at us. There we go. Excellent. For wish mode, you tap twice and the light should turn green. No. Okay, that was spell mode again. So I guess I did it wrong. There we go, green. Ooh, we're wishing now. So after you tap the gem, make a wish. If the gem lights up green, your wish has been granted. If it lights up red, your wish has been denied. Ready? I wish for candy. Will it come true? Yay, I'm gonna get candy. <laughs> and finally, in order to try the enchantment mode, we're gonna utilize those fancy wires. So sit on the edge of the cauldron and then face the camera so everybody can see. Excellent, please don't fall. And now for enchantment mode, we're just gonna hold the tip of the wand to the gem for a couple seconds. And it should make a rainbow stroby color effect. Oh, there you go. And now it's chanting magic spells. Oh my gosh, it's a horse. <laughs> potion, potion, brew. Can you guys hear this? I think the Mixie needs a microphone so we can hear it a bit better. Let's get professional here. Oh my gosh, so cute. All right, so we have covered the basics with our new Magic Mixies cauldron and the interactive pet. Interactive in the sense that we can nurture it and build up its energy level, wake it when it's asleep. Just push the one on the inside, not necessarily the power button. It makes that cool magical, not that, magical sound. <laughs> this is so great. Interact with it, make wishes, cast spells and do some enchantments with our reusable cauldron. So that's it for Jibber, at least for now. I'm not gonna try spell mode today because really there's no point. We know what it does. Spell mode just does it all without mist. Okay guys, that's it for me and for today's two month journey of a review. Of course, I am referring to the Magic Mixies Cauldron. Other than wishing I had got it sooner, I'm gonna say it was actually worth it, especially if you did not have to pay an arm and a leg to retrieve one for somebody you care about. At the end of the day, I think this is a lot of fun and all the little ones will be really excited to test this out themselves. And you know what? Parents will too. It was a lot of fun once I got started, a little chaotic to make sure you guys saw everything, but I really enjoyed it. I think the best part is obvious. It's that mist effect and the reveal of the super cute face at the top of the cauldron. But I do want to give honorable mentions to the fact that the cauldron knows that it's been tapped. 
which lets us know it's time to proceed. All of those noises are super fun and animated, and each one matches the ingredient that is being put inside it. So well thought out, honestly. So although this review was pretty late, I hope you found it helpful, and if you got one of these, now you'll know if your kids will like it, and if it was worth the struggle you may have had to go through like I did in order to get one. Or maybe you've changed your mind now and plan to return it or sell it to make another child's holiday wish come true. Which is great. Just please don't overcharge. It's not right. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did and haven't yet, then please hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, all those great things. They help my channel to grow and they keep me motivated to want to do more fun videos for you and of course to wait multiple days in line in frigid cold weather in order to bring you the newest toy reviews. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but I definitely try. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. That's it for me and Jibber. Bye!